All right. Um, well, welcome um, to this. Uh, I had a question before class, but I forgot to answer it in class and um, thought it'd be useful maybe to make a video of it. And so what we're going to do now is look at the honors assignment from chapter two, which was, uh, it's about variable assignments. And this one in particular is, is doing the musical note frequencies. Um, I haven't scripted any of this stuff out, so I'm bound to make mistakes as I go, uh, but hopefully you guys will bear with me. Um, yeah, and so we read the question here. Um, we have the stuff up above, but basically we're wanting to uh, denote these different musical frequencies that deal with the piano uh, using this function uh, has a frequency of F naught times R to the N where N is the distance keys and R is two raised to the one over 12 power uh, and given initial key frequency when I output the next four higher frequencies. Um, if the, so in other words, if the input were 440, the next one would be 4666 and change, 44, 493 and change, 523 and change, and 554 and change. Um, and then uh, it also says to make the note to go ahead and calculate R first using the raised power and then use that in our subsequent statements. So um, some of the variables we know we're going to need. Um, so first we want to talk about what our variables are. So we're going to have F0. We know we want that to be the initial frequency. And so that is going to actually be a float variable. Oops, I'm doing this the wrong way. Already, this is... So I want a float that's F0. I want a float that's going to be R. Um, I can make in a variable, but I'm not sure that I actually need to do that. Because um, it's just going to increment by one. So I'm going to go ahead and get that. I know I'm going to have to, to get the value for F0. I'm going to start by, to do that, is going to be to get next input. Um, and then additionally, let's see, so the next, and then I'm going to have to calculate R. And so to get R, we've already cleared this float, and it says the way I want to calculate is two um, raised to the power of one divided by 12. And now um, we can't just use the caret symbol in Coral, the language we're using here. We actually have to use a function called raised to power. So uh, the way the function is just called raise to power, and we've done it in a few examples up above, so that's what, or in previous sections, that's why we would remember where to get this from. Also, um, the other place you can get it is if you are from our Blackboard page, you can go and find this file that has tables in Zybooks. So let me share that real quickly. Um, and so this comes out and has a lot of useful things of different functions you have to use, reminding you how the arithmetic operators work, how some of the negatives and stuff like that work. And these are functions that we learned a lot about in this one, um, in, term, in this section, in terms of raised to power, absolute value, square root, and different things like that. We only need the raised to power for this one, um, but some of those others were on other problems in this chapter. Also, it talks about the different type of variables. Again, we're using floats for these uh, because we want the decimals to show. Other times you might use integers if you don't care about decimals. So let's go back to sharing the screen. Um, there we go. All right, and so raised to power. And so what it tells me to do, if you saw over there on the screen, is for raised to power, I need to put in um, what the base is, whatever it's going to get raised. So in this case, I'm going to raise two. Oops, I went onto the wrong screen. I'm going to raise two. And the power I want to raise it to is 1.0 divided by 12.0. Uh, and that again is coming just from, I'm basically just redoing this statement to get a value for R. All right, and then I'm gonna, so I'm gonna put each, I'm gonna do it by putting each thing to output and then doing the next calculation. Um, it can also help to put comments in here. Put, so the first part I would do is with the initial if I could spell it. 
So I'm just going to say put uh, F0 to output. Then I also need to know I need to put a space after that. So I'm going to put space. I like to have a space before that just for easy to see to output. I'm going to put two slashes here for comments. And again, those comments are not things that the computer's going to read in any way. They're just things that I see. Um, and so now I'm going to put out the first frequency. And I think actually it's going to be useful to uh, create another variable. Uh, I'm just going to call it f. Um, and that's going to be my current frequency as I go. So my first frequency, which is when n equals 1, Um, again, notice here is the function that I'm trying to get there. So my f is going to be uh, f0. Make sure I use the same. Nope, f0. There we go. Times. Times just works. And then again, I've got another power that I have to raise here. And so here I'm going to raise to power. And I'm going to use r, which I've already calculated that. That's going to stay constant through this. It's, it's always going to be the same value, but I have to use it over and over. Uh, and then here n is 1. I'm just going to use uh, a 1 in that spot. I'm not going to, I could have created a variable for n and changed n as we went down each time. Um, but it's not necessary to do that if I don't want to. So I'm going to calculate f. And then um, since the coding is about the same, I'm going to copy and paste that and just make things quicker myself. And what I'm not, I'm not going to put F0 to output. I'm just going to put F to output. And if I wanted to make my code even more consistent, I might could even change that up here, because that's actually wrong, because uh, that was F0 and not F0. But I could also just say that F equals F0 on the first time. Um, I also could say that it's F0 times R raised to the 0 power if I wanted to keep that consistency. But that's just doing extra calculations. Um, so yeah, I can do that. Um, and that should put out the first frequency. Frequency. Then I can do it again. Control C, Control V. This is going to be the second frequency. So N is going to equal two. And then all I have to change is that one becomes a two. Do it again. Put out the third frequency. So n is three. So I put a three in there. And then I should have left myself another space. There we go. So it's easier for you guys to read. So this is going to be the fourth frequency where n is four. And so this becomes four. And so hopefully if I've done everything right, I should have three, I should have five numbers output. Should I have to have the initial the first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. And uh, actually, that's another thing. I don't, after the last one, need a space. It doesn't want a space after the last one, so I'm going to edit that. One of the things I like to do before trying to run my code is I like to uh, check the flow, flow chart. Because by checking flow chart, it'll often sh let me see if I have a typo or something like that that's going to cause an error or a variable I didn't declare or something like that. So it did create a flow chart. Um, the flow chart looks about like what I want it to be. In other words, it gets inputs. It does a calculation, it, it calculates F, it outputs F, and then the space. And then it uh, calculates a new F and outputs, so that all looks like what I wanted to do. And again, as we'll learn later in the semester, uh, this is something that you would probably want to do in a loop, since you're doing the same sort of calculation over and over. We haven't learned that yet. You, you, you might want to use like a loop or an array or something like that. We haven't done that, um, but hopefully I'm going to check that. The other thing you might, the other thing to do is if you're doing this for homework is you can go through and copy your entire code um, and paste it into Word or something or OneNote or something like that so that you'll have access to it later. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I've got a Word tab open up here, so I'll just, I'm just going to drop it into a new Word document. Um, but the, the reason for that being that um, if I am right and it's, whoops, hit the wrong buttons over here. And if I'm done, 
then um, I don't have this to help. It's going to erase. It's going to just say you're done and check it off. And I'm not going to make it come back to do it. So I'm going to check it. And it was all right. And so, yeah, so this, so we did exactly what we needed to do. Again, like I said, the downside is I can't go back and look at those things. And that's why um, we saved the code. But yeah, and notice again what the program will always do. It's going to input and it usually gives does the one that's here first. And then you can see it matches. It also helps. You can see if, if one of these is wrong in the calculations, I can compare it. And then it puts in another input and sees if that works for it as well. And so, um, Oh, it actually does have this. So I don't know that they had this in the past. Um, that's actually helpful. They knew how now have the view your last submission button. So I can actually check here and see the, the way I did it last time. So if I forget to copy it beforehand, I can kick that and, and do it afterward. Um, but that's how that would look. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the video. If this leads to questions later, feel free to email me or uh, call.